I never met. But yeah, though, I moved to North Carolina when I was young. Uh, when I was like probably like twelve, I moved. Okay. To, I moved to North Carolina just for a better life. You know how that go. You know, cause it wasn't. It wasn't too much in my city, like I say. So we was just really looking for something better. I mean, yeah. So how was that different than Syracuse? I mean, obviously the weather, I'm sure, was the biggest part because, you know, Syracuse is like a cold hell. But what yeah, else was different? Um, I feel like I grew up fast in Syracuse. Mm. I mean, I grew up fast in Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse taught me how to be a man. And, like, um, Syracuse taught me how to be a man. And, 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 and I can say that North Carolina taught me, like, uh, substance and respect. You know what I mean? Mm. Respect go a long way, so I can say that, that that North Carolina taught me that. Yeah, that's a fact. I mean, and you're going to get that anywhere in the South. That's kind of how it came for me, too, yeah, just being exactly. raised between Syracuse and Atlanta. Yeah. When I came here, like, I can remember going to school. My teachers used to, like, bug out because I used to, like, be say yes, ma'am, and, like, all that. I ain't know about none of that. Like, y'all talk about yeah. that, man. I'm like, yo, Bugging, like, I ain't from that. Talk about, yes, ma'am, you bugging. <laughs> Talk about, yes, ma'am, what? Oh, I'm yeah. like, hey, don't you think I'm some type of car? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's really like that in the South, though. The South is the kind of place where, like, you can go to Chick fil A and they're going to be serving you up like they're your parent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just hella yeah. love everywhere. Yeah, they call you sugar dumpling and, and sweetie pie and all that. All yeah. the names, yo. Up North, it's like, nigga, stop playing. <laughs> nah, for real though. All right. Um. So, what type of time were you on when you moved to the the Carolinas? Like, what type of things were you doing? Man, I was I was in a whole different mode. Like, I already knew we was trying to set up for a better life, and like, I won't try to stress my mom out no more than when she was stressed out. So, I was on I was on a whole sports thing. Like, I, you know how that go? I was playing sports. I was yeah. nasty too. Okay. What'd you play? What we talking? I played football, baseball, basketball. I played everything. Oh, only all black, right. Only black kid on the baseball team. Word okay. up. You was on your All-American type of time. Oh, what? Tell you, nasty. Okay. What position did you play in football? I played slot back, so I played receiver. Oh, straight up. So you got some speed on you then. Man, listen, I really played, I really played quarterback, but they, they tried to play like I was too short to see over the line. Oh, like, shit. In high school, I used to be shorter than I am now. Like right now, I'm short. I'm like five eight. Okay. But in high school, I was like five foot four or something like that. Like I was mm. five four. So like they try to act like I couldn't see over the line, but like whole time, like stop playing with me because I still had it on me. I had, yeah. I had a cannon. I had Word a cannon. up. Yeah, I had a cannon. I was nasty, but I was nice and receiver though. So, okay, I believe you. It's funny, like, speaking of football, I think I was reading an a interview of yours, and you were saying that you told your coach that you wanted to make music, and the coach laughed at you? Yeah, he laughed at me. Wow. And he the same coach that, that tried to get me to come back to the school a couple wow. years later and donate. I was going to say, that's funny. He was laughing at you, but you laughing now just to the bank. So look at how that works out. Yeah, I, used to show, I, 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 I remember I showed up to the game to the basketball game, um, you know, because, like, all the coaches, like, even the football coaches be at the basketball games and all that. Yeah. I, I showed up to the basketball game, Rolex, chains, you know, flex and stunting on them. Mm. You feel me? That's all I know. All I know is popping. I'm telling you. Yeah. Nah, talking. word. That was something else I remember that you said that kind of stuck out to me. You were saying that you always have been popular, but now that you, you know, you're an artist on the rise and your platform is even bigger, um, how does that feel? I won't lie, um, I'm still adapting to it. Like, I got this I got this thing where like um I don't really care what nobody think. Like I say I say what I want. Like I'm mm. that type person. Like I ain't never been the type to fall into the social media and all that. Like I do a little I dibble and dabble and I do what I gotta do because I'm an artist, but I don't really care too much for the social media, so I'm adapting to it. Cause sometimes I say stuff that might hurt me a little bit. Mm. You know? So, you know, I, I'm working on that right now. I got to learn to shut up. <laughs> but I don't lie my mouth bad, too, though. That's something I got to work on, too. I don't lie. I'm adapting to the fame. Yeah. I mean, you got to keep it real, though. But regardless, like, people love you on social. 
you yeah. know, your lives are like, they end up popping up on everybody's TL all the time. So. It's real talk. Real talk. It's, it's love. Yeah, for sure. Um, so when did you get into making music? You moved down to North Carolina. Like, when did you start making music and taking it seriously? I started making music when I was like 15, but I wasn't taking it serious. I just started taking, I'm going to keep it honey. I just started taking music serious like two years ago with my manager. Mm. Like, first year I was with him, I, I was, you know, doing what I do. Like, I wasn't really taking it serious, but like, boom. Then it like, it had hit, like, all right, like, this it, like. Like I can't, ain't ain't no ain't no other route. Like this is what I'm this is what I gotta do. This is what I'm I'm meant to do. This is my purpose in life. You know? mm. So I just ran with it for real, for real. Yeah, and red lights, you know, took off crazy for you. But was that the song that kind of changed the pace for you, or was it something else? Um. Yo, Tusi, I can't hear you. You can hear me? No, sir. Uh, I can up. hear you now. It's it's breaking up a little bit, though. All right. Nah, I still can't hear you. Uh, try it one more time. Hold on. All right, um, his connection was, as y'all can see, a little shaky. But hold on, we gonna we gonna get it together. Um, let me see if I can add him back in. Yo. Yeah, all right, we straight right here. My bad, family. Look, I'm I'm in a car. I'm running away. I'm doing these video shoots right now. I'm trying, you know. Yeah, you on something. the grind for usual. Man, listen, I got some major coming, so I'm in the car. I'm on the way to these. I just shot one scene. I'm on the way to the next scene. Oh, okay. And, yeah, I'm trying to make make sure everybody get what they need, man. Real talk. I've been I ain't dropped music for a while, so that I could drop music for a while. Forget what Word I'm up. Saying. Okay, so you got a little storm coming, is what you're telling us. Man, listen, a uh, uh, whole hurricane, for real. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, that's good news. But um, we was talking about you basically breaking out. Um, So what was the song? Was it Red Lights, or was it something else that you was cooking up that really put yourself on the map? Yeah, yeah. so um, honestly, I had dropped a song named Karma. And okay. The song Karma, it had blew up in my city. And when it blew up in my city, like, um, it was like, all right, it, it built the name for me. It's like, this is what we paying attention to now. Because, like, both cities, like Syracuse, New York, and yeah. Raleigh, North Carolina, like, we ain't never had no no major artist blow. Like, a lot of people don't know Post Malone from Syracuse, New York. Exactly. But, but he but he was raised in Dallas, Texas. So yeah. he, don't really, he don't really claim Syracuse. Um, so, like, we ain't really never had nobody blow. So, like, in my city, it's like, I'm looked at a little bit different. It's love, so like it'd be a lot of pressure. So boom, I dropped the song Karma. It did what it needed to do. It built the buzz in my city, and then after that, had came Red Lights, and Red Lights was like global. Like that wasn't that wasn't like no city fame. Like that was like all right, like they listening to you everywhere, and that's when like I had caught wind of like all right, like I'm a little bit famous. Like I ain't. I ain't normal. Like, yeah, I ain't normal Tusi no more. This, this, this shit getting real. You know, so, yeah, that's, that's what really. Mm. Okay, I got you. I mean, you ended up signing the South Coast Music Group, which is obviously the home of the baby. Um, Y'all track business is just a straight heat rock. Um, but why was South Coast a good fit for you? Man, because they treat me, they Coming in, was another artist. They treated me like it was business. Like business is business at the end of the day, but they treated me like I was family, you know. And they made me a priority. And mm -hmm. I don't want to go nowhere where I ain't gonna be no priority yet. You feel what I'm saying? It's like going to sign to it. It's, yeah. it's like going to, 
even if even if you gotta prove yourself, you know, like ain't nothing wrong with that. But it's like going to a uh, it's like signing to a college, you know, sign going to a school for an offer and yeah. knowing you never gonna get no play time. Like it wasn't like that at South Coast. You know what I'm saying? So like that's that's the reason why, you know, I, I seen it all. I, I I won't lie with this music shit. I ain't I ain't made a bad decision yet. Mm. Straight up. I mean the whole roster is heating up. Um yeah. obviously, you know, like yourself and the baby are at the forefront of that. Um do you guys have more tracks together? Man, you're gonna have to see. Oh, all right, all right. We can we can lead out one right there where it's at. Yeah, we you're gonna have to see. You know what's so crazy though? What's up? Me and, me and baby ain't like yo. Me and baby ain't never used to talk like. Feel me mm -hmm. like. Baby used to do his thing. I used to do my thing. Like we used to. Yeah, you know I mean we ain't never used to communicate. I was on tour with him like three, four times. We like even me being on tour with him, we never still used to talk until like one time like he had told CEO he like yo look, like our first time ever working was. He had called my CEO and told him, like, y'all want to do a song with Tusi and put it on my project. I'm like, damn, like, all right, that's crazy. Yeah. He, he want, this nigga want me on his project, like. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that shit crazy. So, boom, we had ended up doing some shit. And then from there, like, that shit just kept going, you know? Yeah. Nah, for sure. And you could tell his love on his end as well. I mean, he's done interviews and brought you up and spoke on your name. So, you could tell. It's like you gotta, and, and I feel like in this in this shit, man, respect is earned. It ain't just given, you know. Like so, it it took a lot of it took a lot of work to get to that point for you know people to even like, you know, stand for your name. But it's a process, you know. Yeah. It's a process. Nah, I heard that. Mm -hmm. Um. So one thing I, I definitely gotta ask you. Um, something that's consistent in a lot of your songs and a lot of your projects is just you talking about like love and pain and embracing it. Yeah. But it's funny because you'll talk about, you know, dropping tears in one bar and in a few bars later, you'll be talking about dropping bodies. So uh -huh. how do you navigate that? Like, how do you navigate, you know, dropping both love songs and doing the street talk and being like yeah. received well on both ends? I, I get the people what they want to hear. Mm. So I get the people what they want to hear. I, I give them. I mean, what I, what I feel like falling to the people. Mm. Well, you know, don't get it misconstrued. It's just like you know, I, you gotta. I can't. I can't tell them about how I was over here with this one girl. I was over here with Lakeisha. Me and Lakeisha was, you know, trying to have a threesome with Latricia. I can't tell them about <laughs> that. Yeah, you know I mean, I can't tell them about that, and not tell them about how I was over here doing this when I was this person. You know, so it's like it's just the versatility. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. I mean, you definitely brought that that spicy side on your. Uh, you went over back in blood, so yeah, I, I ain't so, a little piece to that. Yeah, um, uh, the back in blood remix. I'm I'm gonna keep it a hundred. What's up? Um, I feel like, yo, I won't lie to this day. I love the black back in blood remix. Like my back in blood remix was hard. Huh. I don't heard I don't heard niggas drop worse remixes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know um, how that go. Only difference was with it, people not used to that too. Like, you know what I mean? So it's it's easier to be like, like I heard academics say the realest shit. Academics said, yo, why why is it that, you know, we we trying to laugh at Tusi for dropping his Back in Blood remix when if Young Thug was to get on this shit, Young Thug would sound just like this. Mm -hmm. You know, or, or, or before like, before Chris Brown was stamped as Briss Brown, you know, and all that, like this is what academics said. Before Chris Brown yeah. was stamped as Briss Brown and and all that, like he was the nigga making love songs. Before Drake was, you know, able to be considered certified lover boy without being laughed at, like he was making love songs and niggas considered him to simply be a lover boy and they was laughing at that. Like, one hundred. Feel me? So it's like all that shit a process, and and. And we live in a generation right now where cancel culture going on. And I feel like the only way to escape cancel culture, because I, I believe, I, I simply believe that artists cancel themselves. I don't think that artists, like, get canceled by people. I think that artists cancel themselves. And the way that artists cancel themselves is they make the situation that people talked about more relevant than it was. 
You feel me? And with me, it's like, nah, I ain't gonna, I, I ain't fuck with Beck and Blood. All right, we all gonna laugh at it. Like, shit, fuck it. I'm gonna laugh with y'all, but <laughs> that shit over. On to the next. Yeah. On to nah, the next. I mean, like, you... Yeah. Now you did your thing on that, man. But you know how the people are. Like, people gonna always have something to say, especially, you know, I could assume from an artist standpoint. It's almost like everything that you put out, everything that you say, every tweet, every Instagram post is just that much yeah. louder. Most definitely. Like, now it's like everything that I do is, you know, people talk about it, but it's like, you know, pu publicity, publicity. But I ain't trying to be that person. Like, I ain't trying to be the publicity, publicity person. Like, you sure. know. You talk about me like let's talk about you know talk about the good shit that I do. I ain't I ain't with the negative. You know I love everybody. My heart big. I ain't I ain't with the negative. I don't do that. Straight like that. Yeah, for you, sure. You brought up Drake, so we gotta dive into it, man. I remember at the top of the month you tweeted, um, you were like the Drake of up and coming artists. So yeah. I gotta put on my Drewski voice real quick. Uh, what did you what did you mean by that? Yeah, yeah, for so sure. so boom, right? Um, I feel like. Drake, one of them artists who you can't put in one lane. Like, yeah. Drake do the rap. He can make he can make street shit, love songs. Um, he literally just do everything, right? Um, I feel like with a lot of the other artists, and I say not all of them, feel me? Cause I don't need to speak on other niggas, but like everybody, everybody got their own lane, right? Everybody got the street shit or the love songs. Like, that's really what it is with us now. It's either street shit or love songs, right? For me, it's like I ain't in that. Like, and I ain't, that's not me. I, I feel like I do it all. You know, I'm versatile. So that's all that I meant. I, I ain't mean, like, I'm on the same level as Drake. I just mean, like, the versatility, that's me. Like, I literally could cut all the auto tune off and rap, rap. Yeah. And, then at the same time, at the end of the song, come back and, and, and put the auto tune on with a four uh with a forty nine humanizer and a four retune speed and sing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Nah, like, that shit that, yeah, that shit that they don't know about. Like, and I do it all. I'm a, I, man. I edit my own music videos. Sometimes I motherfucker record myself. I don't write none of the shit that I like. Feel me like that? I just felt, I don't know. I feel like I'm the Drake of the, of the upcoming artist. And I don't mean that in no cocky way. Like, actions speak louder than words. So, with my next project, they just gonna have to see it. Mm. Yeah, I heard the man straight like that. Yeah, you know how they, you know how they, how, how I say, like, everybody got a lane? Yeah. I don't got no lane. I'm just, I'm in a big ass field or a six lane highway, and I could jump in anybody lane that I want to. <laughs> Yeah, that's how I look at this shit. Nah, for real. And just off of that, like, you know, I know you pride yourself on this as well. But um, even like Arnold Taylor, which you know, for those of you who don't know, he's the head hunter over there at South Coast. Yeah. Um, he talks about like just your work ethic and how that made him want to sign you. So you yeah. can see it too. You know what I'm saying? You always got your foot on the gas. Man, I'm always doing something. I won't lie. Every time I do an interview, I'm in the car or I'm at a video shoot. Mm. Real talk. I mean, I just, I be trying to like. I ain't, like, if people know, I don't know how, and it's, I think it's a blessing, I don't know how, but, like, my name's still been talked about, like, I'm on every, like, artist to rise 2021, I'm on every, every one of them shits, and I ain't been dropping no music, and I don't, I just, I simply don't know how, like, God really got my back, for real, for real, like, God got my back, because I ain't been dropping no music, so, I be, but, but, in the meantime, it's like while I'm not dropping the music, I feel like God know that I'm working and my fans know that I'm working. So they they the ones who keep my name alive. For real, yeah. for real. Cause I ain't been dropping no music, but I've been shoot I have been shooting music videos and I still been recording. So like it's about to come like back to back to back to back. I ain't need, for real, for real, for a whole month, I could really just sit in the crib and do nothing if I wanted to. Like that's how hard I've been working. That's for sure. This shit don't stop me, bro. Real talk, nigga used to be homeless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. But look at you now, though. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's that stuff that, like, people look up to. I'm sure yeah, in every talk. city, all across the country. Real talk is a process. Nigga used to be, nigga used to be homeless. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I did a lot to get to where I'm at. I'd be damn, I stopped. It's a, it, I, I heard Nipsey Hussle say, um, I did a lot to get to where I'm at. It'll take more for me to 
damn, all these people out here. It's like 50 people. So yeah. But I um, I heard Nipsey Hussle say, you know, I did a lot to get to where I'm at. It'll take more for me to go backwards than it is to get to where I want to be. You know, mm. that's me. Yeah, damn. That's real as hell. Um, so you dropped a couple more questions, man. Um, you dropped two projects last year. I know you said you kind of been cooling, but um, you obviously, you know, had Platinum Heart and Poetic Pain. Yeah. Um, whatever you have cooking up now, what makes that different from the things that you were releasing last year? Um, I, I actually recorded this one in a um, in a studio. Like every every song you ever heard from me, um, never came out of actual studio. It came out like my crib i record all my stuff so with this project um i got bigger producers and i actually recorded this in the studio with an engineer who knew what he was doing you know not to say i don't know what i'm doing but shit the engineer know more than me and he, he i i know what i want to do and he know how to do it right so like this this is the first project i ever recorded in the actual studio sheesh my DJ called me Chip Skylark. Yo, my my DJ called me Chip Skylark, and he called me, uh, he say I'm the black Justin Bieber. Word. Yeah, he's so funny. I won't lie. He called me that shit, and I just, like, I took it and ran with it. Yeah. I stood out, too, man. I saw you got the Tusi Skylark. Uh, you was rocking <laughs> yeah. on your neck in a few pics. Yeah, man, I got the Tusi Skylark. Let me see. Yeah. Oh yeah, straight like that. It's, gleam it's gleaming at me yeah. right now through the camera. No. Word. With a, with a big step on the back. Oh yes, sir. So for so. Now that's heat. Say no more, man. Um, was there anything else? I don't see any questions in the comments. So was there anything else that you wanted to live for, leave for the people? Man, I love y'all. You know, um, continue to be yourself. Continue to have your own thoughts. Don't let nobody tell y'all that you can't do nothing.